We are back with another comic Saturday. We are back to read, to continue our reading of The Last Ruining Lost Years, issue two. <laughs> now, remember the last issue, issue number one, we are introduced to the four new turtles. You know, for some reason, one of the turtles we did not know the name of. Three of the four, though, are named Odin, O D Y N, Uno, and Moja. Once again, the fourth one, for some reason, they did not give us the name of the fourth one. But we see them first, once you open the book, we see them being trained by April. I mean, no, I keep saying April. By Casey, her daughter. She feels like she has to... Well, I can't think of the word right now. She feels like she has to redeem herself from Michelangelo's death in the original Last Ronin, issue number five, at the end of that. So she feels like she has to train these turtles to be like the old turtles. But it's hard to do when... They got to crawl before they can walk kind of situation. And then April tells her, you need to know how to take care of them. Take your time with them. They'll learn as they get better. But we also see what Michelangelo was doing during those years that we don't know about in the last Ronin comic. The black and white the black and white pages where he's just traveling through the mountainsides of Japan and stuff like that. This is basically what this whole series is about. As we kind of see that a little bit in the last with Michelangelo learns that he cannot be scared anymore. He has to man up to avenge his family's deaths from the Orohu, Oroku. But so yeah, so this one I'm hoping we get the name of the final turtle. I'm hoping we do. And we get more in depth into the training and stuff like that with um Casey. And maybe April will help out too. But like once again, you all know what it is. It's your boy CJ Mello. It's Comic Saturday. Let's go. We begin with Michelangelo fighting with a thug, breaks through a window. Town 38, unified, Korean Republic, then. He must be confronted. So the story so far then, having lost his father and brothers in the war with the foot, a defeated Michelangelo isolated himself away in the mountains of Japan. But the grieving hero Solus was interrupted when a warlord known as Death Worm wrought chaos in quiet countryside, forcing the ninja to flee. But trouble seems to have found him once again. Now, Case Marie Jones struggles with the challenges of raising a new generation of turtles as successors to the Hamato Brothers Ninja Air. We see Casey trying to train the new turtles in a new way, a different way, make them clean up. So she's essentially their new sensei. Now, oh no! I drop my water. Sensei's gonna be mad. Cause you're supposed to be mopping, Odin, not drinking. I know ye. But so Jenga makes me thirsty. So Jito, dude. You can't you can't get anything right. That's not true. I get lost things right, Uno. Yeah? Like what? Hey Case. What are you doing? Hi mom. Nothing, just watching the kids clean the dojo. Odin broke a glass. Again? <laughs> yeah. I want to see how they handle it. I don't know everything I do, Uno. I just know I do lots of it right. <laughs> Can you help me, Yi? Before Sensei comes back? Nuh-uh. Sensei said my job is to only wipe things down so I can only wipe things down. Moja? Hey, Moja! What, Odin? I'm busy. I draw my water. Again? Uh, uh-huh. Can you help me clean it? I'm scared of the sharp stuff. Nope. Sensei Casey says we have to fix our own messes. But... Oh. Uno? No way, dude. Alright. So what I'm getting so far from this... Uno... I mean, not Uno. Odin is a little bit like Mikey. Scared to do things sometimes. Uh, what you call it? Odin. Not Odin. I'm sorry. Moja is feels the way I'm seeing in this in this panel. Odin. Oh, um, Moja is a little bit like Raph. And what you call it? Uno seems like she. By the way, is a little bit like uh, Leonardo, the leader. 
in Yi, which I'm, I'm assuming is somebody. I don't know who the hell fourth one is. But anyways, what's going on here? Cry baby Odin broke another glass. I, I sorry, Sensei. Are you mad? Really mad? No, I'm not mad, but I do want to talk about it. Everybody on me. Lesson time. I made the tables super clean, Grammy April. I see that, kiddo. Nice work. Come on, Moja. Sensei wants us. What? Okay, listen up. I'm going to tell you all the story Grammy April told me once about my dad and the Ninja Turtles. Master Splinter had sent them all on an important mission to stop the Foot Clan from stealing stuff that didn't belong to them. Like always, Leonardo was in charge, and just when he was going to give the orders to grab the bad guys, my dad saw something else happening. Some other bad guys getting ready to be mean to a poor lady. This made my dad really mad. He wanted to go help the lady. At first, the Turtles didn't want to go with my dad because they were supposed to be stopping the Foot Clan, like Master Splinter said. But my dad didn't listen to them. He went anyway. And even though they knew it would mess up their mission against the Foot, the Turtles followed. They helped my dad stop the other mean guys and save the poor lady because it was the right thing to do. I think about that story a lot. And the time I helped Grammy stop the city from flooding when what I really wanted to do was help my sensei fight the foot. See TMNT, the last Ronin. Asterix. It's just sometimes we get so caught up in what we think we're supposed to do. Or what we want to be doing. That we ignore what we should be doing. Like helping out. One of our teammates, when they're in trouble. Wow, Grandma. Grandpa Casey and the turtles were so cool. Don't you miss them, Grammy April? I do miss them, ye, yeah. so much. But sometimes, it's just like they're still here. All right, so ye is the other one. Okay. We get a we get a look into again Master Splinter's journal, finding your purpose, letting your purpose find you. Always propose seeks. Propose, oh, sorry. Always purpose seeks. Purpose chooses all ways. Master Yip. Right, once again, we see uh, some karate movements or ninja movements. Movement attack, movement A, B, and C. And then, then this. Back to the past with uh, Michelangelo. It's not good. What, what the hell is it? And bad as my Korean is, it's not too hard to figure out what's being said because I've heard it all before. I tell you what it is. Let me guess. It's dead. Kill the monster. Is it saying in Korean? I'm totally exposed and I've only got to blame myself. Weeks of hiding in plain sight in this dump without any issues? And I blow my cover in a petty barroom brawl. Stop that thing, me, you. Stupid, Mike. Real stupid. Come on, freak. Let's finish this. So much for quick and quiet. It's been nearly three years since the dying old man in that burning village in Hokkaido told me to run away from a psychopath called Deathworm and his army of thugs. Three years since the ghost of my brother suddenly showed up out of nowhere telling me the same thing. So what's it going to be, knucklehead? You just going to sit there and cry like a baby? Or are you going to do what the old man told you and get moving? I know. Crazy. Or maybe I just took too many knocks to my skull? Whatever it was, insanity or concussion, I wasn't stupid enough to believe I was in any shape to take on another fight right then and there. So with no real plan other than getting the hell out of Dodge, I started heading south to the Japanese mainland with only one thought, helping to ease my guilt for running away. Live to fight another day. Little did I know, another day would turn into days, then months, then years of running. At first, I kept to the woods and forest as much as possible, foraging for mushroom and wild plants to survive. My brother Donatello told me what was safe to eat and what was poisonous. He called it Sansai. 
the ancient practice of wild plant picking. Or maybe I just knew what to pick up and what to eat after the years I'd spent surviving in the mountains. The constant jabbering of my head companions was making it hard to separate past from present, reality from delusion. And whether I was crazy and concussed, it didn't seem like they were in any hurry to go away. And lonely as I was, I wasn't in any hurry to let them go. I eventually made it to the southern edge of Hakioto. Behind me were three years of isolation, piles of dead bodies, and a psycho and his army thug most likely after my head. Ahead of me was the Sea of Japan, and beyond that, the mainland, and beyond that, a dark reckoning. So without looking back, I just started swimming. And my glitch just jumps into the ocean. I start swimming to the mainland. Once I got to the mainland, I continued south, using the western coastline as my compass. I slept during the day and hiked at night, keeping a low profile and staying out of sight. As long it was a long, slow trek, and I still wasn't sure exactly where I was going. Much to frustration of my traveling partners. They started nagging me constantly about not having any kind of solid plan, doing everything they could to push my buttons. But I was way too tired to argue. By the time I reached the Monument of Remembrance in Akita, they had finally had enough. Sun setting, you know, what that means. Yeah, another sneaking night and pointless walking. It doesn't have to be pointless. There's been no sign of Deathworm or his goons since we left Hakido. Either we lost them or they don't care about us anymore. So if we're not running from them, what are we exactly doing, Mike? Wait. Did you just say we? Michelangelo realizes that voices in his head are almost feeling too real. We aren't doing anything, Leo. I'm getting ready to head further south as soon as the sun's all the way down. You three are dead. So? What's that got to do with you? Hiking your sorry butt all the way down Japan like a chicken with his head cut off. It's got everything to do with everything, Raph. I'm here because you couldn't keep your sigh in your pants when Karai ambushed us way back then. I'm here because you started a war that killed everyone I cared about. Everyone that ever mattered to me. Including you, you stupid jerk. Yeah, well, maybe I did make a mistake after that ambush. No maybes about it, Raph. Whatever, Don. Maybe that mistake started things rolling downhill for us. But we all knew it was coming one way or another. Us against the Foot Clan, just like Master Splin always said, it was eventually going to be last man no matter what. Or last mutant standing. You're right, Mikey. We are dead. But you're not. And neither is Hiroto. Yeah. He's the last of his family. You're the last of ours. Which means... You're the only one of us left who can finish what Raph started when he went after Kari. Hey, come on, guys. Give me a break. Kari started it when she broke the stick and truce. No. We all know this started way before your fight with Kari. Way before the truce. Way before any of us were even born. This started with Father and Shredder. And now it ends with Hiroto and me. So what are you saying? I'm saying where I'm going now. Maybe deep down, I always knew. New York City. City. New York City. To stand or fall. Now you're talking. Am I? It's getting harder to tell. So we, I mean I, finally had a plan. Vengeance for my family awaited me in New York City. In the form of Oroku Hiroto, current master of the Foot Clan, grandson and last living heir to Oroku Saki, the Shredder, and son of, of Oroku Karai. As for my brothers, it was business as usual. Talk, talk, talk. Raph moaning and groaning about the long hike. Johnny proposing we jump aboard a train on the nearby tracks. Leo reminding me how rusty my fighting skills had become and suggesting we make a stop at a secret Hamado Clan elite training camp on the island of Chiburi Yema. My father had written in his journal. Yep, business as usual. So that night with Ralph's constant complaints, Donnie's solution, and Leo's destination in mind, 
I hopped on a southbound train near the Omono, Omono River. Next stop, Sakai Minato. Once I made it to the port city, I can barely watch as passengers boarded a cruise ferry bound for Russia via Korea. And when the time was right, I boarded it too. Having nearly a year of sleeping only in the daytime, I was wide awake all night long and figured I'd head to the main deck and get some peace and quiet before the other passengers woke up. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I should have known better. Who the hell are you talking to, huh? Crap. Hey, Loon, my friend asked you a question. Whoa, look at what we got here. Ain't that the green freak the boss has been looking for? How many green freaks you think there are, huh? Don't know. We're just gonna have to take the ugly head to Korea with us in a box. So man breaks a glass over the over the deck. Boss will love a gift if you're we're right. Yeah, might even give us promotions. <laughs> yeah. The tattoo on the junk idiot's chest wasn't just a happy bullseye. It just let me know who that boss was too. <laughs> Death worm. I thought I put the mess in Hikaru behind me. <sighs> Guess not. I'd already planned to make a watery detour before the boat got to Korea, so there was no point delaying the inevitable any longer. Man, talk about stopping some cockroaches. Yeah, and whatever you, you, you see cockroaches, there's bound to be more. Says his brothers. And I wasn't about to wait around to find out if there were more death worm thugs on the ship. So much for peace. So much for quiet. The, the Swincher Chiburu, Chib, Chiburi Jima Island was way harder than I expected it. It was a miracle. I didn't drown. I don't even remember the last part exhausted and delirious as I was. But I'll never forget the first thing I saw when I finally came to. What do we have here, Nori? Hmm? Translated from Japanese. Such an unexpected prize the tide has sent our way. I should have brought me a bigger net. <laughs> An old man with his dog pulls up at and wakes up Michelangelo at the beach. <laughs> Wake up, turtle man. Or your suit will become cold. But where am I? Generally speaking, you are in Chiriburi Jima Island, specifically in my guest hut. This fine lady is Nori. My my chunin and a very good dog. Woof. And I am Master Yip of the Hamato clan. The elite sensei you seek? Wait, you? No offense. You're speaking Japanese, but you're... A Chinese man? I am that. And you are a turtle man. Clan Hamato is wonderfully diverse, is it not? I will be outside when you are ready, Michelangelo, to begin your training. We've much to do. You and I and Noya, of course. Woof. Hold on. You speak English too? And you know my name? And why I'm here? Yes, well, you've been in and out of consciousness for nearly two days. Young friend mumbling and moaning all the while. That's how I learned what you are called and what you seek. Now please finish your soup. You must be famished. Hmm. What does one call soup for a turtle, Nori? Woof. Ah, yes. Turtle soup. <laughs> That's a bad joke, but a funny it wasn't the last bad joke I'd hear from the old master. What came next, though, was no joke. After a few days of soup and rest, I finally had the strength to step out of the hut, where the old master and his furry tuning were waiting to put me to work. Ah, so good to see you up and about, son, Splinter, son of Splinter. Your training can now begin. Oof. So Jito, the way of cleaning... The transitional students clean the dojo together, a sign of respect and a way of giving thanks to our sensei. Since Master Yip considered the entire camp his dojo, and since I was the, his only student, you know, when you were saying you were going to wipe the Foot Clan off the face of the earth, this ain't what I thought you meant. <laughs> Me either. You missed a spot, Daniel son. That's funny. I got very familiar with the tradition. Whatever, shut up. Turns out the cleaning was just getting started. Oh my God. Master Yip also wanted to cleanse me 
old, of old habits and old crutches, which meant weapons weren't part of the early training. How can you master what you hold in your hands if you don't first master your hands? Or as you English would say, the little idea for beginning, except I'm American. Which would explain why you're talking instead of listening, huh? Less yapping, more yipping. We started with the basic form of Wing Chun, which he called Siun Nimtao. Our training continued. I began to question the softness of the forms. My Siyip explained that the hand-to-hand -hand techniques we constantly practice had many of the same benefits as Shojiro. Both traditions slow you down, centering you in this present to better focus on your breathing and techniques and the task at hand. <clears throat> All just an aside, do not mistake softness for weakness. Master Yip clocks Michelangelo on the face. I didn't question him again. Eventually, we moved to weapons training. In Bad Jam Do, excellent footwork is crucial to success, as is the sober understanding that, like all weapons, the blade you hold in your hand are intended for deadly purposes. They are the Dit Ming Dao. Life taking knives, as the English say. Yes, you Americans too. Days turned into months. Training became routine, but never mundane. The lessons I was learning daily had me yearning for more. And I saw and I grew to understand what my father had written so highly of Master Yip in his journal. He was really an elite sensei. He even taught me a thing or two about puns. What did the Buddha say to the dog vendor? Make me one with everything. <laughs> Snort. <laughs> for more than a year and a half, I, I was always busy. Thanks for the Sojito assist, Nori. Woof. And never alone. Your moving Zang forms improving, Mikey, says Leonardo. Not surprising, he's literally spent hundreds of hours all over that thing. Y yeah, get a room already, dummy. Whatever. Shut up, Michelangelo t says to Raph. And then my training was complete, and it was time for me to head west to New York City and redemption. But Masayev threw one last curveball my way before I left. You told me of your past, of your family's tragedy, your self-imposing exile in Japan, your flight from the one called Death Worm, and of your mission of vengeance against the Foot Clan. And as you spoke, I only listened, but now I must speak. When your father came to train with me, he too held a burning desire for revenge against the enemies of your family, and like you, he had made it his life's purpose to see through his quest for vengeance. And so I trained him as I trained you, as I trained all my students, in solitude, in quiet, sharing the techniques that instill self-control and inner contemplation over outward, unrestrained violence. To first win the battle, you wage within yourself before embarking on bloody vendettas against others. And you, even more so than your father, have been victorious in this. And now the time to seek justice for those you have lost has come. I will not deny you your quest, but I will present you a question before you depart. Can you honorably rush to face one enemy when you fearfully retreat from another? Deathworm? Yes, Deathworm. He must be confronted. In your heart, you know this. As I rolled away, Master Yip's words burned inside my brain. It was more like a challenge than a question. Take down Deathworm first, then go after Oroko Hiroto. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. I'd have preferred another bad punt. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Seriously, Raph, shut up. It was nighttime when I finally reached Donggai Sea in South Korea. Correction, the unified Korean Republic. I learned some important things over the next few days. First, it was cold as a mother, and I stuck out like a sore thumb, which meant I definitely needed new clothes. I hated stealing, but I didn't want to get spotted, and I sure as hell didn't want to freeze to death. Second, from what I could figure out from the newspapers, there had been a massive earthquake in China while I was holed up in Hakido. 
like 9.6 mag magnitude massive. The destruction took a lot of China's nuclear facilities, turning most of the country into an eradicated wasteland. The Chinese government pretty much collapsed overnight, and any control they had over the nations was lost. Starting with North Korea, unification with South Korea quickly followed. But maybe the most important thing I learned was that death worm thugs already had been causing all kinds of problems up and down the newly united country over the last year. According to the papers, he was last seen in the former DMZ. Ooh. Man, do you realize how destructive a 9.6 magnitude quake is? No. But I bet you're going to tell us, nerd. As the brothers speak to each other in Mikey's head. So that's where I headed. Town 38. The town was named after the 30th parallel, and it seems stuck in a schizophrenic sorry, limbo somewhere between its Cold War past and unified present. It was like a well-lit slum shiny and new and old and filthy all at once. It was hard to tell where the crime stopped and where the law started. But it wasn't hard to see why it was called the Wild West of the East. Fighting death worm here wasn't going to be easy. More like a crooked needle in a vice infested haystack. But at least I could blend in while I searched. Everybody minding their own damn business in town 38. Which meant finding death worm wasn't just hard. It was impossible. Then nobody knew where he was or they weren't about to tell me if they did. I searched high and low, but nothing. I slept in alleys and I ate from dumpsters. After weeks of failure, I'd had enough. Death Worm was more of a ghost than my brothers, and if I didn't get some real food in me, I was going to be one too. So I sold half my warrior's soul for a few bucks to buy a hot meal in a warm place where I could sit and think. You made an oath to Master Yep. Think about what the hell I was going to do next. To beat to beat Death One before you go out to Oroko Hiroto, you're honor bound. I disagree, Leo. I don't remember Mikey taking any official pledge. It seemed more like Master Yip was making a suggestion to me. Well, I suggest we just pick one of them for beat for a beat down, then get to it. We shh, quiet, Raf. Death One, yes, Death One. He must be confronted. In your heart, you know this. I know. Nice tattoo. So tell me, where's Deathworm? Deathworm? What's that? Sounds like something you get from eating bad dakikochi. Translate from Korean. Who's asking? A green freak. You! <sighs> they all start attacking Michelangelo. I need to take down the four idiots quickly. <laughs> and quietly. Kill you. I wanted answers, not attention. Crap. Unfortunately, my new friends weren't cooperating. Not at all. Bastard. Which brings us to now. Come on, so much for quick and quiet. But I still needed answers. And if this punk doesn't want to help me the easy way, then there's a hard way. Master Yip taught me that I'll work just fine. Okay, pal, either you give me some intel or I take out your eyes, Michelangelo says to Deathworm. Where's Deathworm? Or I thought it was Deathworm. Come on, come on, come on. M M M Mongolia, good boy. And goodbye. So that's it. Then drop smoke. <sighs> Grab your gear. Borrow an old wreck. And head north to Mongolia without a plan, says Leo. But there is a plan. Find Deathworm, take him down, and then go out to Hiroto. You said it yourself, Leo. I took an oath when Master Yip. I'm honor bound. Yeah, Leo, quit complaining. That DMZ dumpster diving life was getting old, Raph says. Well, I like to still argue that no oath was officially taken, but whatever. All, all semantics aside, I just hope we make it there in one piece. Because we all know, Mikey sucks at driving, says Donnie. To be continued. Ooh-wee!
Okay, let's go. We are swinging with the fences, ladies and gentlemen. I am excited. This is this is already getting good. So this is what Mikey was doing, and before he made it all the way to back to New York City, he detoured to fight somebody called Deathworm. Will we see Deathworm by the end of this whole issue? I hope so. But that is the end of this episode. You don't know what it is. Hit me up on twist.tv slash gaming. One word, no spaces. YouTube.com slash at MFG22. Twitter.com at MelloPod22. Just look for that CJ Mello. My logo is literally everywhere in all these places. The Mellow Podcast on Facebook group. Y'all know what it is. And also go check out Dub B Energy for 10% off your tubs. New flavors coming probably in the next couple of weeks or even months. Hit that code MFG22 for the call to get 10% off your tubs once again. Until next time, hit that like, hit that share. Tell your people all about me, all about this podcast, all about these Comic Saturday issue readings that we do. Until next time, always and forever, one love, peace.